Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I decided to showcase a couple of cards in the background that are some of the most transcending players of their respective sport. And as you saw with the title, I'm going to ask you one big question. Is Jerry Rice the best wide receiver ever? Now throughout sports, there has always been transcending players who revolutionized the sport. In baseball, we can point to Babe Ruth as being the player who made the home run a tremendous part of the game. Players like Hank Aaron, Roger Maris, and Barry Bonds have since done it better in some cases, but not quite to the level that Babe Ruth did it. After all, none of these hit more home runs than any other team, and Babe did it twice. Now that's just one example. In football, I've witnessed the best wide receiver to ever put on pads. This player reeled in 1,549 receptions, all totaling 22,895 yards while 197 of them were for touchdowns. And all three of these feats happen to be records in the NFL held by Mr. Jerry Rice. Here I have his rookie card, which I love so much. It's a prideful card in my collection. And obviously, these records held by Jerry Rice have to make him the greatest wide receiver ever to play, right? He transcended the sport because those numbers don't lie, right? Not so fast. How about we take a look at another set of numbers. We have 488 receptions, all totaling 7,991 yards, while 99 of them were for touchdowns. Not very impressive. How about if I tell you those numbers came from about a third of the amount of games that Jerry Rice played, during an era in which a season was comprised of only 12 games. Yup, and who ruled that wide receiver in those days? None other than Mr. Don Hudson. Here's a very beautiful card that John Mangini gifted me. It's a prideful card in my collection and I gotta thank John one last time for it. Now I gotta peel away from this gorgeous picture and get back to this debate. Now I'm not gonna act like Jerry Rice wasn't great. He truly was the best I ever watched. I'm also not going to lie and say I saw Don Hudson play because I didn't. He played from 1935 to 1945. There just aren't many alive who saw him play. But this will be a debate about the greatest and most transcending wide receiver. And what's transcending is defined as to rise above or extend notably beyond ordinary limits. And that's definitely something both of these players did. Now I showed you some of their career stats and you know they played in different eras. What else do we know? How about who got them the ball? For Rice, you have Joe Montana, Steve Young, Jeff Garcia, and Rich Cannon. For Hudson, you have Arnie Herber, Cecil Isbell, and Irv Kahn. Rice had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks for most of his career, while Hudson only had one for half. On this front, it could be said Rice was spoon-fed sweet passes most of his career as opposed to Hudson. Then again, the league was spoon-fed passes in Jerry Rice's day simply because playbooks called for more passing plays as compared to the era that Don played in. It was a true game of gridiron football. Teams mostly ran the ball and scores were decided between the trenches. So when did it change? In 1935, all because of Donald Montgomery Hudson, the same man that was also signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers. He could have been the first two-sport athlete before Bo Jackson, if not for the NFL president awarding the Packers exclusivity rights to him. Hudson would go on to not only lead the Packers to several championships, but he became a football innovator. Don developed the route tree, which is still used today. A route tree which Jerry Rice helped make look like a redwood. Rice would use that tree to help him lead the league in receiving yards six times. As for Hudson, well, he led the league seven times. Rice would lead the league in touchdowns six times. Hudson did it seven times. Dang, they're both pretty damn good. How about championships? Rice had three and Hudson had three. Wow, that's close. Is having all of the receiving records going to be the deciding factor on who's the greatest? Records which, I'll add, may never be broken, even with a 17-game season. I'll throw in one last caveat to this debate. One of these two players played two other positions and happened to excel at both of them. That person played kicker and safety. And that person is Don Hudson. 
As a kicker, he led the league three times in extra points and once in field goal. And as a safety, he totaled 30 interceptions throughout six seasons and actually led the league with six in 1940. Playing three positions and affecting so many facets in the game was what earned him an MVP in 1941 and 1942. I think with adding this phase of his game to the debate helps offset so many records set by Jerry Rice. And with that said, I'll ask you one last time. Is Jerry Rice the best wide receiver ever in football? Now I know one thing. He wasn't the most transcending wide receiver, that's for sure. Because that honor definitely has to go to Don Hudson. He belongs alone at wide receiver joined by the likes of Jim Brown, Jackie Robinson, Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, Shoei Atani, Muhammad Ali, Tiger Woods, Wayne Gretzky, Bo Jackson, Lawrence Taylor, Steph Curry, Will Chamberlain, John L. Sullivan, and the Williams sisters. It's not often when an athlete comes along and transcends the sport, but when they do, they shake up the world and transform it to the likes that no one has ever seen. Now I'll ask you, who is the best wide receiver ever in football? Jerry Rice or Don Hudson? Let me know in the comments. He was the most dominant player in his era, an 11 year era in the 30s and 40s. Don Hudson led the NFL in receiving in eight of his 11 seasons and averaged a touchdown catch every five receptions on his way to a career total of 99. Don's blazing speed made him hard to cover. This time, watch him take a long throw from Herbert. Good for six points. Rice! to Rice. Caught! Touchdown! Oh, my gracious! He probably thought that was a great ball. 